Thank you very much for your attention and for your patience because this is the last presentation in this panel. So it is entitled Pardon Dona or Senhora, Reassessing Some Forms of Address and Politeness Issues in European Portuguese. So in the line of what's been uh, done uh, by Svetlana, uh, Svetlana Kurtizes only focused on one word, comrade, and uh, it reminds me of the word in Portuguese, and it's ex exactly the same, post-ideology, post-revolution, it has that uh, in-group relation, uh, semantic, pro-semantic, and now it's related to mockery and, and, and this kind of thing. So, in my case here, uh, we can see that Donna is uh, something related to this, to the uh, rural system. So, the introduction, so topic outline names, problem and relevance, methodology, participants and instruments. Um, results, European Portuguese, Portuguese in Madeira, and discussion. Language patterns and change, how we face this in the pragmalinguistic choices and language policies and practices in the pedagogic setting. So, the aims are to discuss the impact of forms of address, pronominal forms in terms of address, and pragmalinguistic choices now in use in European Portuguese, with a particular focus in Madeira and on the mainland, across domain social groups and in intercultural communication. And give a comprehensive account of a number of communicative situations in European Portuguese with a focus on terms of address, pronominal reference. Discuss the forms of address in the scope of their impact on language use, common patterns, and language change in communicative practices. To reflect upon the strategies to foster linguistic and intercultural education as is mandatory in the common European framework. Language diversity, policies, practices and perspectives in the pedagogic setting. So problem, in the end of the study, uh, the, the study wishes to discuss the extent to which language changes in communicative practices stem from cultural differences, social mobility and media discourse following the review uh, of the literature, and the need for a pragmalinguistic focus in language teaching to foster intercultural communication. Uh, so, um, the theoretical framework uh, that I've chosen is mostly borrowing on pragmatics, Brown and Levinson, and uh, most of them have been organized, and we can see that from 1978 uh, then there was a lab, 1960, 205 and then 2012, so it means that uh, the wider the scope of countries belonging to the European community, the more linguists felt the need to talk about these, not uh, well over cross-cultural issues, but inter-cultural uh, issues. Uh, so uh, then in this uh, area, uh, I found a very interesting uh, publication about politeness of interdisciplinary approach uh, with pragmatics, contrastive linguistics and interlinguistic approach. Forms of address revisited at the Paris Colloquium in German, Spanish, Finnish, French, Hungarian, English, Italian, Dutch, Polish, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Swedish and Basque collected in a volume available at the Cervantes Virtual Center. So it means that there is a need, so there is a concern among linguists to tackle about this interdisciplinary approach and interlinguistic approach. Um, so uh, by the end of 2008, um, um, I participated along with uh, the project of Gresh and Schöner, uh, entitled Eurolinguistics, uh, and from these I'm using uh, the questionnaire, uh, which is uh, with six, six sections, and I implemented the questionnaire in Portugal in 2008, then I implemented it again in November to July 2011-2012, number of 55 participants randomly chosen, among lecturers, journalists and undergraduates in Roman studies because I wanted to see uh, with the terms of address among um, people who were, uh, well, had some kind of mastery of the Portuguese language. 
and this is was this was selected according to crash uh, own criterion this uh, last uh, november 2012 i ex uh, i decided to expand the scope of analysis and and then i i asked my students to uh, in uh, following the criterion of accessibility to um to um inquire uh, parents and elderly people on the island so across domains social status and so on so differing in the age range jobs and origin i have 208 uh, participants according to their uh, accessibility so contexts covered scientific academic service encounters business and technical the informants were approached through the accessibility uh, criterion, office, enterprise, institution, among relatives, friends, in the street, in the restaurants. So the empirical study is of qualitative approach, exploratory analysis now, uh, for the time being, because then I'm going to, do, uh, to use a corpus analysis as well. Questionnaires, so in this case, I'm just focusing on section A, which is forms of address. Section A has uh, 14 questions. Knowledge of the forms of address in the native language. Children to parents, what terms of address. Children to relatives and elderly, among workmates. Uh, um, employee to employer, employers, employers to employees. Students to teachers, teachers to students. People to shop assistants among partners, employees to clients, clients to employees, people to strangers in the street. A review of the literature very quickly. Uh, what has been written about, about uh, uh, forms, of, um, forms of address and politeness issues in European Portuguese? We have our, our major grammar, which is real well compared to uh, Quirk and Greenbaum's university grammar, by Lindley Sintra, 1972. Then we have a PhD in German by Hammer Müller in 1980, Vossi Estreberia, and here you see uh, the, uh, what the form, why am I talking about Donna and Vossi as uh, outgroup relations. And then Hammer Müller in 1984, to a cachorro. So you see, you is dog, well, informal, to informal, Voce is, uh, is derogatory. So then we have um, one decade later, 1994, 1995, 1987, Cook, about uh, uh, forms of uh, address. And then uh, a decade later, 2007, 2008, 2012, changes in the uh, forms of address in Portuguese. So. Uh, Portuguese is amongst the most complex Romance languages as integrating the triad uh, speaker of, of uh, hearer oriented allocution TV forms. And here you have second person singular to, you, proximate, a proximity, você, uh, and vos, which, which is more form, formal. Uh, second person plural, você is plural, which is not derogatory. Vos, which is the syntactic form, which is correct. Then we have noun subject for the second person, o senhor, a senhora, Mrs. Miss, uh, Mr. Ladies and gentlemen. And neutrality, subtracting the noun subject and using the verb inflected in the third person. So this is the way we do in continental Portuguese or standard Portuguese, we avoid the word você. Variations in European, Portuguese, Brazilian, uh, Brazil, Africa, Angola, Mozambique, Guinea, Asia and Timor and India have been uh, um, spotted and studied. Uh, well, and standardization of European Portuguese is mostly, uh, owes mostly to media discourse, institutional discourse, formal uh, context of education. Okay, honorific forms. Well, why você is derogatory? They're, they're a chronic perspective. Drawing on a corpus of historical documents and literary texts. Você, so we had in the 14th century, Vossa Alteza, 
your highness, vossa real alteza, so, and this is related to what Lerina has said, superlative, our language is related to many superlative forms, to indicate formality, your highness, vossa senhoria, so it's polysemic. Then we have Vossa Mercy appearing in the 15th century when relating to uh, uh, royalty, your mercy. Uh, as time went by, Vossa Mercy was used by, by, by commoners and they were uh, into, in terms of Vossa Mercy, Vossa Mercy, Vossa Mercy and Vossi. So now you see the origin of Vossi. Today losing the polite dimension. In the 15th century, it was restrained from use among royalty by Philip II when we were under the Spanish uh, rule. Okay, and then in the 16th century, uh, Vossi was, so this Vossa Mercy was, was, was replaced by, by Vossa Senhoria, Your Highness, Your Excellence, Vossa Excellencia, and your Majesty, Vossa Majestad. So, Vossi is uh, from then on uh, envisaged as a face threatening, threatening act. Uh, it, it relates to distance in European uh, um, Portuguese and intracultural, it's a negative face. So, in, uh, on the continental, in, in European Portuguese, or even if I use Vossi to my mother, she will, she will uh, not allow me uh, to do this. Now, why was it so important to me to study this? Because I've been living on the island, on Madeira Island, for 22 years now. And terms of address has, have been a clash for many people in many encounters, service encounters, especially when it comes to um, non madeiran speakers of Portuguese. Madeira has been influenced by two major cultures. One is the Portuguese, who were the first settlers, and then the second most influence is by the British, from the 18th century onwards. So, uh, forms of address, forms of address, you have V forms of address plus the third person, again, Vossa Excelência, Dignissimo, Ilustre, Royalty, Meritissimo. Legal domain, we use also Meritissimo. Academic domain, we say for the, for the Dean Magnifico, Magnifico from the Italian language. And clerical domains, we forms, we have Reverendo, Reverendissimo, so always the superlative uh, forms. Okay. So, what were the, uh, the results in 2008 among 55 uh, informants? The most, for everyday communicative practices, the most frequent was two for informal, voce and voce is formal, or seldom voce. The pattern is voce, and this is the one which is uh, used mostly in Coimbra, which is the central part of the mainland. Mature students in Madeira often uh, you mentioned o senhor, a senhora, definite article plus the title, third person singular form of the verb, or excelentíssimo senhor doutor, vossa excelência. So, it means that at the time there was mobility related only to certain uh, qualifications, the doctor, the doctor, the medical doctor, every other person would not be called doctor, uh, even a PhD. So children to parents, you and my, by and my uh, father and mother. In Madeira informants across ages are often mentioned o senhor, você, papá, mamã, mum and dad. So in this case, the influence of the English language is now. And we see that there is Children to relatives, most frequent voci, which is not accepted in standard European language. Vos, u avó, avó, granny, granddad. And we see that most of the, of the informants use these uh, uh, relations like granny, daddy, so the nuclear family. 
So it is related more, families are all together, cousins and so on, because this is an island. But the nuclear family, which is related to father, mother, grandfather and uh, grandmother, uh, aunt and uncle, uh, uh, are more related to the nuclear family of the British uh, culture. So we have here multiple cultures at, at work. So encoding and decoding uh, proximity and familiarity, uh, as uh, uh, now we have two different patterns from <coughs> business relations and this is most related to the ways um, uh, business relations are conducted in English. And here there's a pattern now which is with voce, formal, first name, third person form of the verb, which is not accepted in European Portuguese or standard Portuguese. So if you use voce, then uh, you, you lose your face, it's, th it's a threat. The service encounters, you see that most of them used formal voce as formal, formal. Again, so the, the British pattern and verb into third person singular, not so often. In Madeira informants across ages often mention voce, voces, a dona, o senhor, a senhora. And that is the phenomenon of hypercorrection. Uh, imagine we go to the, to the market and uh, I, someone addresses me, a dona. A dona is something like uh, um, madam, but the madam. So it's the third person as if referring to another person, not direct. So a dona in, in standard Portuguese is related to the rural uh, areas where uh, a dona is related to status, but now it's related to mockery, because a dona now is related to a posh lady, an arrogant person, and with some, uh, some, uh, um, some state, some social status. Now, from 2008 to 2013, changing patterns. So among the 208 informants, the most used, so there were 15 informants who did not reply to the first question. What, do you know the forms of address in Portuguese? So, it means that a quarter of the informants don't know the forms of the Portuguese. They have reduced most of the forms to two forms, tu and você. Are they really prepared? to speak in the Portuguese-speaking world. So lacking awareness of forms of address in Portuguese, to and for C, the most frequent reference in their replies in all situations. But all the respondents, so it means that, that grandparents previous to the revolution, and this is what I say, post-revolution has bundlerized the, 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 this, this, this uh, status and this uh, class-oriented terms of address, all the respondents, or, and those especially from rural areas, offered a wider panoply of forms of address with reference to proximity and distance. Avoiding the use of OC and offering the older form of royalty Vosmsi, Vomsi, o senhor, my lady, lady, mister, or omitting the noun subject followed by the third person singular. So in this way, we come to, in the, in the line of Svetlana's, uh, Professor Kurtis' uh, uh, presentation, ideology-based and class-oriented terms of address. There was reference to a dona, so the madam and not madam, hmm? without the name, because we use this uh, in, in, in Portuguese, in European Portuguese or standard Portuguese, you go to Mozambique or Angola and you say the same, a dona, a senhora dona, and then the name, when you don't know uh, the, the rank, social status or academic qualification, and instead of a senhora, so it's a faith-threatening act, distance in European Portuguese, intracultural and negative face. 
Other varieties of Portuguese, especially Brazilian Portuguese in the form of soap operas, have influenced the way people in Madeira use the forms of address, particularly the young generation. Because in, 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 in Brazilian, tu and você are used as, so they reduced most of the, of the um, form, uh, addressing forms to tu and você. But again, now, non so verbal communication and prosodic features come into play because we in portuguese so european portuguese we are blunt direct and a bit abrupt você and tu okay whereas in brazilian we say tu and você disse meu cara eh? and so you create this friendly environment from proxemics and from um, so, regional practices that came up in our, in my corpus now, that I've collected now, were the TV forms, imperative, aham, andão, arbar, which is completely different from any other part uh, in, uh, in, in the Portuguese speaking world. Then we had Benina, mistress, miss, Menina and plus the name. So people call me Menina. So for affection and not Dona. So this, because I am now considered one of them. So I'm not Dona, I am Menina, despite my age, because it's related to in-group relations. But this Menina, Again, in standard European Portuguese and on, on the mainland, Menina, is related to someone we knew from, from, from um, young age. And this is related to someone who has uh, a job. For instance, uh, hairdressers, um, waiters, uh, masons. Uh, well, people who we know their jobs and we have some, kind, uh, some sort of affective, affection, rela affective relationship. Here, Menina is for in-group relations and, 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 and status. Social rank, status with recognition, formal but effective term, you can have o senhor, a senhora. In family relations, there are differences from continental and European Portuguese and uh, well standard Portuguese. We say they say o senhor seu pai, so instead of o seu pai, because we have the determiner before, so we say o senhor seu pai, very formal, and a senhora sua mãe, very formal. Something that we don't say in standard Portuguese. So, discussion. The multifaceted language teaching learning paradigm has developed in many directions. And uh, most times, uh, uh, the functional approach has, led, has, has been replaced by communicative approaches. The origins lie particularly uh, within theory and practice of language teaching and partly in response to recognition of the social and political significance of language teaching. So what I would like to say is that all communicative interaction is a matter of implicit negotiation and cooperation towards awareness of different language varieties, different speakers, readers and writers, different discursive communities, thereby building rapport, creating solidarity relations among locals and the young generation. But what this paper points to further research as follows. Analyzing the way language structures are presented in manuals and student grammars, either designed on a national or international level, from linguistics to applied linguistics, from exclusive concern with minimal units of language in early structuralist linguistics and early transformational generative grammar, to social linguistics and ethnography of communication, to a discourse-based view of language, and forms of address need to be disambiguated as constructing authority, communication breakdown, and deepening the gap between standard European Portuguese and Madeiran Portuguese. Distinguish the grammar of spoken discourse across varieties and change 
from the grammar of written discourse. So mobility and change promote educational environment that takes into account the needs of students by promoting skills in the mother tongue in terms of communicative and intercultural competence by promoting context awareness. And it is a need to enhance the knowledge of language varieties and changes leading to greater proficiency in social cultural competence. Awareness of the individual's positioning in dialogic encounters between I and the other, ruling inter-individual and social relations. Thank you very much for your attention and taking your time. <laughs>